Thank you. But I want to talk to you. Get a little closer. That's it. I'm going to talk to you about the choreography I'm doing. I'm pushing you kids because I'm doing a professional choreography to kids. You are kids still. And you're facing very hard dancing. But you're doing fine. I'm really meaning that. And I think that the Santa Fe kids, I have to thank them for all the effort they do. But we have to do some more, some more effort. Are you ready? Yes. yes. Are you sure? Yes. True? Yes. <laughs> OK. So we're going to go and start the beginning of what we did before. But put in your minds to be professional. of a great ballerina, you know, first of all, she, she must have something inside. You should look up. Something that inside that will go to the audience. We call it angel. It's inside. That I don't think you can learn. Or you don't have it. That's all there is to it. When she comes out on stage and she just doesn't do a damn thing, you know, she just stands there watching the audience and the audience will, will feel, you know, hey, there's a woman, you know, there's a queen. Hip, hip. The second thing is technique. The facilities and the knowledge of how to move your body in the uh, technical oh. world of ballet. Hey, she knows very perfectly well, but she goes over, you know, and she gets styles. And she interprets, you know, what the choreographer. And she becomes sort of like, uh, you know, like a sculpture. She becomes the soft material, you know, that, that the sculpture has you know, with his hand, you know. And she holds the audience. She knows how to hold the audience. She has the, the courage to go out and tell the audience, I am here. Come on. 
I saw a very, very bad grand jeté. Because the grand jeté, it means grand. You know what grand means? Big. Big. And jeté means sh the, the foot, the legs like that. For instance, do me a good split. You see? And you, this arm front, like that. Do you see that? She should be in the air, like that. Should be. <laughs> Not she, all of you. Even the boys. You have to do that. So, it reminds me, you know, I had a, a great, I must say, thank God I had a great teacher. Michel Fokin. You never heard of him? Yes. You never heard of Michel Fokin? <laughs> you never heard of she Michel Fokin? Yes. You have? Yes, we have. Put the, put the, uh, the, the arms up. Yes. You've heard of him? You heard of him? Put the arms, the one that heard of him. You're not too sure. <laughs> you know, he's one of the greatest choreographers and, 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 uh, eh? in, 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 in the, uh, of the world, you know, in, in, in music. Petrushka, he did. Prince Igor, he did. My God, so many. Silphine, that's his. And he showed, you know, the people how to really dance that, you know. I had the fortune to be under his under his arms. Because I was with the Ballet Rouge de Monte Carlo, I was there for the first time. He picked me up, you know, for for Petrushka. He said, I want you to do Petrushka. My God, the way he showed me. And one of the things he showed me, I'm gonna show you. I want you to go and get, give me a, give me, give, give me two, two shoes. And get into a line over there. Nina's, Nina's little feet. Oh my God, let's see. Take the jump from here. and land here. And then go there, not on your, on your bottom, <laughs> but on your legs, you know. Okay, let's go, go! Go! Ah, that's it. Go, 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 go! Yo, hop! Yo nací en La Habana en 1917. Mi padre, Matías Alonso, era un señor muy serio y difícil. Mi madre tenía un nombre muy lindo, Laura, Laura Raineri. Y era una mujer muy alegre y con una sensibilidad especial para la música. Era pianista, concertista. Mi hermano, Fernando, que es mayor que yo, dos años, siempre fue mi mejor amigo. Mi mamá estaba en el Consejo de Dirección de Proarte Musical, una asociación cultural privada que trataba de promover la cultura. Allí tenía una clase de ballet clásico que impartía el señor Yamor. Sí. A mí me gustaba ir a sus clases y sentarme a mirar cómo las niñas practicaban ballet.
un buen día me di cuenta que aquellas chiquillas en las barras que había que hacían unos ejercicios que eran muy buenos para fortalecer los músculos de las piernas y como yo era apasionado a jugar fútbol americano me dije Alberto ponte a hacer ejercicio con esas niñas que eso te va a ayudar en el fútbol y me metí en las barras yo también ¿Qué escándalo se formó entre amigos, incluyendo mi hermano Fernando? Los, los amigos míos y los amigos de mi hermano me veían a mí como un poco, ¿y este muchacho qué está haciendo aquí? ¿Qué rayo está haciendo tratando de bailar con las muchachas? Ahí había una especie de, de, de mirada, de mirada sus picas. Y un buen día pasó el ballet ruso de Monte Carlo por La Habana. Y a Borsky, amigo del coronel de Basil, el director del ballet ruso, le dijo, yo tengo un muchachito que tiene muy buenas condiciones para el baile. ¿Por qué tú no le das una oportunidad? Y de Basil me miró, me volvió a mirar y le dijo a Yaborsky, Mándamelo, mándamelo para Monte Carlo que le voy a dar cuatro meses para que se pruebe. Y si es bueno, lo contrato. Imagínense el escándalo que se formó en mi familia. Mi padre y mis tíos estaban escandalizados con la idea de que yo me fuera solo para Europa. Y a bailar ballet. Yo solo tenía 17 años. Pero mi madre me apoyó y le dijo a todo el mundo que si el ballet era mi deseo, bailarín sería. Y así, con la bendición de mi madre, salí camino a Europa en un día del mes de julio de 1935. Mi destino era Monte Carlo. a lot because for the first time that I came I thought to, I took it just as a hobby practically you know but then I really began to love it I love the movement I love the music I love what it said you know and uh, I saw that the different how the body the body had to talk had to talk it was a new world a new world, you know, just opening into my eyes, you know. And I loved it. I thought, maybe I could do this. Poco tiempo después, el ballet ruso de Monte Carlo regresó a La Habana y con ellos yo. Yo como bailarín solista en el bello Danubio. Y toda La Habana me fue a ver. Aquellos muchachos que, se, que me miraban un poco como extraños, todos fueron a bailar. Todos se metieron a bailar. Todos querían bailar. Y entre ellos estaba mi hermano. Y sin querer, pero queriendo, me convertí en el primer bailarín cubano y así nació el nombre Alonso en el mundo del ballet. So, I'm going to ask you something. What is the most important thing that is in choreography? Answer that. Telling a story. What? Telling a story. Emotion? Music. What? Emotion. That's not bad, but... Musicality. Music. Huh? Musicality. Motion. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most important thing. 
Yeah. All right? Don't move your legs. So what would you do if you didn't have the legs? Do it. The legs. What would you do if you didn't have legs? Don't move. You'd have to sit down, no? no. Go. <laughs> but you're sitting on your legs. <laughs> right? Don't move your hands. Don't look at me. <laughs> Don't move. What is she doing? Nothing. Nothing. And not only that, lie down. Don't move. What is she telling you? She's dead. She's lifeless. Dead. Why are we scared of death? Because we can't move. Because we can't move anymore. Right? Right. You understand? Look at that. <risa> Mi memoria está fallando porque en realidad yo soy más, más viejo y ella no es tan vieja. Tú ves, si ella me oye, me empieza a decir barbaridades porque ella me diría: Te voy a decir, Sonia, háblame, dime lo que yo dije, háblame. Que tú estarás viejo, pero yo no estoy vieja. <risa> ¿Te das cuenta? <risa> Attenzione I Alberto, ¿tú sabes lo que me estoy acordando ahora? No, no tengo la menor idea. Del fuego. Porque ahí fue donde nos conocimos. ¿Te acuerdas, no? Digo, ¿nos conocimos o no? Sí. Yo sé que yo me acuerdo. Sin... Ahí había una ventana. Ahí había una ventana. Yo me acuerdo que Y mirábamos el fuego. Y tú estabas aquí. Y yo me acuerdo que yo vine a ver el fuego. Y hice esto. Y tú estás empeñado en que era abajo. Yo digo que era arriba. Porque el fuego era arriba. Lo que pasa es que tú mirabas para abajo. Yo no sé por qué. Y era entonces estuvimos aquí así. Y el fuego yo creo que se entonces acabó, nadie me miraste, vio. Espérate, que entonces tú me miraste y yo te miré. Y seguimos mirando el fuego. ¿Te acuerdas? Sí. El fuego. El fuego. El fuego fue un verdadero fuego. En casi medio siglo que hemos estado juntos, nos sentimos uno del otro y el otro del uno. Yo sé cómo él piensa y él sabe cómo yo pienso. O sea, es una interrelación muy, muy bien. Él tiene sus opiniones, yo tengo las mías, pero al final coincidimos. Es una comunión. Soy Albertico Alonso, hijo de Sonia y Alberto. Yo nací y me crié en una familia donde la pasión por la danza era parte de la vida diaria. Mi tío Fernando Alonso, mi tía Alicia Alonso, mi padre y mi madre siempre tuvieron gran expectativa de que yo formara ese mundo. Eh, mi abuela una vez me lleva a, a una función de mi madre y al finalizar esta, eh, hay una gran ovación y yo me recuerdo que ella empieza a decirle al público que estaba presente eh, miren ese es su hijo, este es el hijo de Sonia y a mí yo quería desaparecerme en ese momento eh, siempre supe que la danza no era para mí 
nunca sentí esa pasión. Al principio de 90, eh, mis padres se encontraban en México. Eh, ya yo tenía ya... Estaba obstinado, como quien dice, con el régimen. Yo hablo con ellos y ellos y le digo que no había futuro para mí en Cuba, que tenía que salir del país de una forma u otra. Ellos eh, tratan de, su, con sus contactos en México, me hacen un canto de invitación, eh, hacen todo un proceso legal para yo poder ir hacia México. ¿Qué pasó? La embajada mexicana en Cuba me negó la visa. Ahí se me cerraron todas las puertas. No había otra opción que tirarme al mar. Unos días después de que me negaran la visa en la Embajada de México, eh, unos amigos de, eh, llegan a mi casa y me proponen un negocio. El negocio era que, dado que mi casa estaba frente al mar y tenía un garaje, ellos construían una balsa para irse ilegal del país. Yo les dije que sí, pero yo, que yo me iba en esa balsa. el 17 de abril de 1992 nos tiramos al mar y ahí empezó nuestra travesía o la búsqueda de la libertad. You know, the, the way mothers feel, you know. We were seeing the television and then came out a notice in the television that, that some Cubans were rescued, you know. They were rescued and, uh, and somehow Sonia said, in that group, my son came. And I said, oh, come on. No, he has come. He's here. He followed us. <laughs> it, was, it was incredible. Then we got the phone call from Albertico telling us that he had arrived in Florida. We were in Mexico. Desperate. He reunited with our son. We started asking everyone we knew for help. Help came when our friend Martha contacted Alora Haynes at Santa Fe Community College in Gainesville, Florida. Marta called me and she said, Laura, you're never gonna believe what's happened. And I said, what is that? She says, you'll never believe who's in Mexico and wants to defect. And I said, I can't guess. And she said, Alberto Alonso. Four, two, three, and four, one. And I said, well, what, how can we help him? What can we do? And she said, well, I'm gonna try to, to bring him here, but I don't have a job for him. Is there any way you can help? And I thought, well, I'll go to the campus at Santa Fe. I'll ask my chairman and the administration. And uh, I went to Leslie Lambert, who was the chair at the time, and said, uh, listen, there's this incredible man, and he's one of the most world-famous choreographers around. It's an absolute genius. If we can't bring him here, it would be our huge mistake. And is there any way we could just hire him for one semester just to get him off the, out of his situation and, and on with his life? and it would be of great benefit to this campus and to the students. So she talked to other people, and lo and behold, it happened. Okay. From the first position we go, plie, brush, and two, and brush, and four, a little faster, two, and three, and four. Brushing. Alora fue, yo no sé cómo, en realidad, cómo explicar. Para mí fue como un ángel que Dios mandó, francamente. Alora bajó la mano 
y, me, y nos dio trabajo aquí en Gainesville. Y fue como una cosa tan importante, porque por fin teníamos una carrera que podíamos, podíamos trabajar en lo que a nosotros nos gustaba y, y al mismo tiempo manera de poder vivir. I remember when Sonia and Alberto first came to our home. My daughter was just under a year old. She was talking quite a lot for a one-year-old. And she had some of those little cardboard books that had the picture with the, with the word underneath it, dog, cat, snake. And Sonia and she were reading at about the same level at that point in English. It was very sweet. It was almost as though my one-year-old were teaching her English, and then she was teaching my one-year-old Spanish, you know. And it was really very endearing, the way we all came together. We didn't plan for that. We knew we were going to be working together and that we were going to be assisting this family to integrate into this community. But we didn't count for the family, familial, uh, lovely connection that we were going to have, and we're really happy for that, too. When Alberto and Sonia moved here, they lived with Alora for a couple months, and so that allowed for them to kind of get into the community, um, and he really has a very good sense of what Gainesville's like, who we are, um, football, the arts, and everything that we uh, encompass here. But it allowed him to really kind of get to know our students as well. Um, I think Santa Fe is such an interesting amalgamation of every kind of talent that you can imagine. Um, from the traditional age student to the non-traditional age student, he walked into a class and was teaching and he had 16 year olds and 80 year olds in the same class. And that's not always the case when you think of a typical college situation. And so, um, but he embraced that. And I think that's what's so endearing about Mr. Alonzo is that he, whatever he is given, whatever's put in front of him, he truly can make lemonade out of lemons. And, and it doesn't have to necessarily be a tart lemon. It could be a very sweet lemon, but he can mold anyone. Don't go down and reach for. Stretch, 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 stretch. Being groomed by Alberto in any role, whether as a teacher or a, a dancer or as a student, um, is truly an honor. And he demands the best constantly. Cuando yo entré aquí, que ya, ahora sé siete palabras en inglés, pero antes no sabía ninguna, sabía unas tres palabras. Era, me, me fue muy difícil pensar cómo me iba a, a enfrentar a los alumnos. Pero fue muy bueno porque hubo una, una química inmediatamente con los alumnos. Porque yo me dije, bueno, tú, yo tengo que ser honesta. Lo mismo que cuando uno eh, baila y trabaja en el teatro, uno tiene que ser honesto, si no, no llega. Y aquí yo tengo que ser honesto y, y enseñarles de verdad lo que yo sé. Hay algunos que, que, como diríamos en Cuba, tienen tres pies. Y sin embargo, llegan a bailar y llegan a, a, a presentarse en el teatro con una dignidad y, una, y hasta cierto profesionalismo. Eh, eh, jueguen con el ritmo. I'm feeling the rhythm. Y sabá, y tiquiticao, y ¿no? Pero hay que, hay que sentir el ritmo. Es necesario sentirlo, sentirlo, sentirlo de aquí, de aquí, de aquí, de, 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 de todo el cuerpo, dentro, no fuera. Toca otro ritmo. Chango. Cada vez que veo a Sonia bailar, me vienen a la mente las palabras del escritor inglés Arnold Haskell. Cuando la vio bailando en La Habana de los años 60 y dijo, Sonia Calero is a superb paradox, proud and impudent, 
primitive and classical, appealing to all yet so infinitely subtle that she is always a mystery. A rumba is a drama, the story of Eve, legendary and international. The dance is daring in the extreme, but never leaves the narrow bounds of art. When I remember this beautiful sun-drenched island, it is of Sonia that I should think. She belongs to the truly select company of the great. Havana, 1967. Había una guerra en Europa, la Segunda Guerra Mundial, y no había espacio ni tiempo para el baile. Era la hora de la lucha contra el fascismo. Pero en América estaba pasando un fenómeno muy interesante de florecimiento del ballet. Así que me fui a Nueva York y comencé a bailar con el American Ballet Theater. In that time, there was something growing in the United States of being American, of doing American things. You know, and uh, there was a tendency in the choreographers to do American ballet. It was a sort of a nationalism that came about, that came about, you know, that was surrounding all of us. And that nationalism was perfectly done, you know, by Jerome Robbins, you know. And then I had the opportunity of dancing Jerome Robbins Fancy Free. I did his part of the, uh, the of the Cuban, you know, the Latin, of the Latin dancer, you know, in Fancy Free. And uh, I saw that Jerry Robbins was not doing just classical things, you know, he was just doing, you know, <laughs> And, and, and moving, you know, like, like a Latin person, you know. Ballet was not such, such classical, you know, it was more free. He was using his, 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 his American culture. I wanted to use my culture, my culture. And that is what threw me into trying to do a, a Cuban-style ballet. A finales de los años 50, en La Habana, mi trabajo coreográfico comenzó a encontrar su propio lenguaje. Con la llegada de la televisión, pude tener un espacio para mí y mis bailarines, entre ellos Sonia y llevar la danza a públicos más diversos, más allá de los muros del teatro. Pero el momento de cristalización de mi estilo cubano de ballet pasó con mi coreografía El Solar. donde Sonia se convierte en la intérprete por excelencia del estilo cubano. Fue también donde Alberto y yo colaboramos estrechamente, él desarrollando todo aquello que, que, venía, que tenía en su mente sobre la danza cubana y haciendo, moldeándome para el desarrollo que él quería. Tuvo mucho éxito desde París, en la Olimpia de París, hasta Moscú.
Yo diría que, que el solar me definió ya. The Cuban style really has a sensuality to it that is not crass or overt. It's extremely subtle. He has for me, and I think for our students, has capitalized on that and has brought that to our, our attention, saying, it's OK to be a woman. It's OK to have a, you, you, you as a dancer. Traditionally, you think of very lean dancers and that this is, this, this is the look. There's not much curve in that traditional look of a ballerina. Um, he erases that and allows you to be womanly and, and a sensual being, but in a very powerful way that isn't crass. The Alonzo name is tremendous in Cuba because it was the combination of the three Alonzos that really brought the Cuban ballet into the international scene. And they all, three of them, had a very particular contribution. Uh, Alicia was the world-class Cuban ballerina. First time ever a Cuban person ever became at that level. Fernando is the teacher. That's why you'll always hear Alberto very modestly say he's not a teacher, because he really feels he identifies more with being a choreographer. I think he's a pretty good teacher, but, but Fernando, that's what he's known for. Then, of course, Alberto was not only the choreographer, but the person who knows how to kind of move into a situation, get a lay of the land, get a look at all the different cultures, pull from those cultures, put all the ingredients together, and come up with something tremendously unique, which was at first his Cuban-style ballet. But I've noticed that he does this with other cultures, too. Maya Plisetskaya, one of the world's greatest dancers, the prima ballerina of the Bolshoi Ballet since the early 60s, until her departure from the Bolshoi stage in 1990. Maya has been the diva of many great choreographers, from Maurice Béjart to Roland Petit, full of angels, courageous and brutally honest, Plisetska illuminates the world of Russian ballet. Last year, for her 80th jubilee, the Bolshoi was producing Maya's three most beloved choreographies and invited me for the staging of the one ballet that I did for her, Carmen Sweet. Впервые Альберта Алонсо я встретила в Москве, где в лютую зиму были спектакли кубинского балета. Мне мама сказала, знаешь, там есть один хореограф, Я думаю, что тебе понравится, что он делает. Она ведь знала мои мечты. И я пошла. И первая сцена, которую я увидела, я сказала, как Татьяна Упушкина. Это он. Это тот хореограф, который может сделать для меня Кармен. Я еле досидела до антракта, побежала за кулису и увидела его, и не сказала ни здрасте, ничего, мы не знакомы были. Я сказала, Альберта, хотите сделать для меня балет? Он сказал, это моя мечта. When Maya told me that if I wanted to do Carmen, I said, of course, yes, but 
I had a problem. I had Roland Petit in front of me. Roland Petit is a, 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 a wonderful choreographer. That's one of the great, big choreographers, you know, French. And he had just done Carmen. And he had done, he did Carmen with a tremendous success. And Maya was telling me to do Carmen. What the devil am I going to do with Carmen? Because there is a Carmen already done by Roland Petit. And the, a big problem came into my head, you know, because I cannot do something that he did or try to look a little bit like he did. I have to respect him. I have to respect his work. I have to do something else, something that has nothing to do with him. And I started thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking. And then, little by little, the poems begin to fall in. I came all of a sudden to the bright idea, you know, to do it in a, uh, in a, in a bullfight ring. When I saw it in Spain, you know, I was very much interested. A torero fighting for his life and trying to dominate strength. It's a ring where people are playing life and death. And there's a big audience watching. And the audience are bad, because the closer the, the, the Torero gets to the bull, the more they like it. So I saw that that's an inquisition. Those people sitting there, you know, they are, they want the, 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 the bullfight to die, practically, you know? And uh, little by little, you know, the way the arena was formed and everything just began to fall, to fall, to fall, to fall, until, bloom, it fell. And I had the idea for coming. Come with me. Don't listen to too many people. Не слушайте многих людей, ладно? Everybody wants to put his hand Каждый in the problem. You think about it. If you have any doubt, ask Нет, me. Only me. Okay. It was really crazy idea of Maya to dance Carmen. We were very good relationship with uh, Dmitry Shostakovich, and Maya asked him, "Please, could you write ballet for me?" And uh, he said, I, "I like this idea. I like this libretto, but give me a few days uh, to thinking about that." And uh, after a few days, he called us and said, "Please coming to Dacha, I have final decision." He said, very deeply sorry, deeply sorry. I couldn't write this ballet. I love this libretto, and I love you, and you are great, great. And my ask, why, Dmitry Dmitry? Say, I'm afraid, be there. Because if uh, public will coming to the theater and didn't hear the couplets of Torero, Torero or uh, Habanera by Carmen, they will be so disappointed about that. But how to connect with everything, I don't know. And then Maya asked Hachetorian. And uh, after uh, everybody, I, I mean, Shostakovich and Hachetorian refused to write this music, uh, then, of course, she pushed me for this occasion. And Alberto already coming. And uh, then we began to do this, to do this ballet. Together. Ну что же, а когда во, во, все было уже готово, э, знаете, начались страшные скандалы, потому что нам не дали не, э, сценические репетиции. Одна, она же генеральная, она же прогон, она же световая. Все она. И дальше премьера. И 
Знаете, скандал, потому что такого не видели. Это не социалистический реализм. Это все другое. Это ноги в другую сторону, это не на пальцах. Это, это настоящий скандал. Короче говоря, после первого спектакля вместо второго был объявлен щелкунчик. Отправили в это время Экспо-67 в Канаде. Отправили декорации, а спектакль запретили. Наш министр Алексеевна Фурсова, она мне сказала, вы предательница классического балета. Вы э, сделали женщину легкого поведения из героини испанского народа. El mensaje de Carmen de Ballet en general es el mensaje de, de libertad, de, de sentirse libre de cualquier opresión, que sea eh, político o sexual, ¿no? Eh, de verdad, ella es libre y ella toma sus decisiones. Aquí tal vez el mensaje de Carmen fue todavía más claro, porque el, el, su... Eh, su amor a la libertad, su, su protesta constante y su afirmación personal aquí no, no estaba tan bien saludada. Además de este mensaje, los movimientos tan atrevidos como segunda posición, como todo, ese, ese fue considerado demasiado libertino ¿no? aquí. Y, también provocó una cierta irritación entre la, la gente responsable de, de la cultura. El triunfo de este ballet fue no solamente artístico, sino político también. Y el primer coreógrafo que, que, que se realizó en ese escenario fue Alberto. Es, es una cosa histórica.
знаете, когда мне сказала министр, Кармен умрет, зря вы все это сопротивляетесь, Кармен умрет. Я ей ответила, Кармен умрет тогда, когда умру я. А вот теперь я могу сказать иначе. Я умру, а Кармен будет жив. You see, I never imagined that 40 years later I would come back here, you know. It's like a dream. Everyone was much younger. And all of a sudden, I met many of the artists whom I worked with. It was almost like seeing ghosts again, you know. But real ghosts, you know, it was wonderful to to see them, to talk to them, you know. It's a very funny feeling, you know, because at the same time, I must say that I am also old, you know, I'm 88 already, you know, and uh, I'm leaving tonight back to Florida, and I don't know if I'll ever see them again, especially Maya, especially Rodion, especially all of them. You know. in, in the meantime, probably, well, Let's not talk about that, you know. <laughs> This is not working. It's not working. You, are you? What the devil are you doing? Are you dancing or what? You know, we're going to do it in very. What are you doing here? Come over here and listen. First of all, time has gone like that. You see, you're not doing it in the staccato where it has to go. You know what the staccato is? What is? Sharp. 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 Eh? Sharp. Sharp. And how is sharp? 
No, hombre. <laughs> Are you dancers? Or would you like to play? If you like to play, well, let's all play. But if you are a dancer, that means that you have to work. And you have to work everything. And first of all, the beginning of the, of the, uh, of the what you call the, the, the dancing has to be done with energy. Because art is not only soft, art is also ener energy. You have to know when to do, when you have to open your hands and the hands have to do, say something. You just go like that, no. You do because you, you want to say something and you, even the hands you know, how to use them, you know? So is the body. And two kids don't do it, you know? I mean, really, now I'm talking very seriously, you know? You really have to work and do the energy that make that audience, you know, fall like used to, Michael Fokin used to say, they will fall and adore you. Can we go and do it better? Can we? Yes! Can we? Yes! Let's go! <laughs> Come on! My name is Joanna Levine, and I'm actually a PhD student in astronomy at the University of Florida. And I've been dancing with Alberto for two and a half years. For me, um, Alberto is, is my connection to history, dance history. My name is Jessica Mayhew. I've been dancing with Alberto for about five years now. He told me one time he was gonna chop my head off and take it home and put it on his dresser so he could yell at me at home. And that, that was our starting point. And I, I have just grown to love him so much since then. And I know that he loves me. Mi nombre es Carlota Spuro. Yo he sido bailarina por siete años y he estado con Alberto por tres años. Él me ha enseñado que no solo es movimiento, que no solamente es la experiencia que tengamos en el escenario, sino cómo uno transmite todo lo que uno siente a través de los movimientos. My name is Philip Golubok, and uh, I danced here with the Santa Fe Dance Company almost 30 years ago. Then left Gainesville and pretty much left dance for a long time. I came back about two years ago and started taking ballet classes uh, pretty much just to get back in shape. And that's when I discovered Alberto and Sonia. Uh, they were teaching here, and I was just amazed at the, uh, the standard that they bring, the level of quality that they demand of all the students, uh, regardless of uh, where they are in, in ballet, whether they're beginners or advanced dancers, and also regardless of age and other factors. So I was very pleased that I wasn't being, you know, treated in any special way because I'm older. Uh, I was held to the same very high standard that they bring, uh, given their world-class experience in, in dance. Brother, how Brother. are you? <laughs> how are you? <laughs> What's happening? It, it, What's happening? It's raining, it's raining cats and dogs. <laughs> it's raining cats and, and dogs. And a lot of lightning. L listen to me. Uh, this is a recorded. Yeah. You know that? Yes. Yes, I heard. All right. Okay. It's, it's this. wonderful to talk to you. Everybody here asks about you Every all the time. <laughs> Well, we take... don't forget. We don't forget your important contribution to the Cuban ballet. 
Thank you. Thank you so much. Sonia is here with me, and she's going to shout. Oh. Hello. I'm, I'm, Listen. <laughs> Hello, Fernando. How are you? Did you hear her? Sonia, I'm fine, but your English is getting better and better. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what are you teaching in Cuba? I'm teaching uh, uh, two couples, very talented, and they work very hard. There are so many good dancers. But, uh, but everybody, everybody in Cuba wants to be a dancer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fernando, listen. Last night, yeah. I went to the yeah. theater to see... What? Last night, yeah. I went to the theater yeah. to see the ballet, the uh, Miami City Ballet. And you know what, uh -huh. they, and you know what they play? Uh, they play Nancy, uh, Fancy Free. Oh my God, you danced it. <laughs> and so did you, I think, no? Yeah, you danced it. <laughs> I remember that. You remember? I remember you danced <laughs> uh, What was the name of the dance? Tran con queso, guayaba, no. <laughs> Yes, I certainly do. Hey, qué bueno está eso, la verdad. Brother, qué pena, qué pena que te tenga que dejar. Yo te deseo. Yo te deseo. Lo siento, hermano. Óyeme, escúchame. Yo te deseo a ti, no 91, 150. <laughs> but in good shape. <laughs> but in good shape. I hate to leave you because I wish you were close to me. But let's I know, hope. I was too. Let's but hope that let's hope that you can come next year or something like that. You know. I hope so, brother. Yes. And sometime I hope you can be here too. Well, let's hope so. Let's hope so. Yeah. All right, brother. All my love yeah. to you, and to Yoli. All my love to you. And your and family. A big bear hug. A big bear hug, that's right. Okay. <laughs> Bye, brother. I love you. Love you. Same way. Bye. Okay. Bye. Jason. Um, I've been dancing since I was about eight years old. I started working with Alberto in 2003 here at Santa Fe. And now I'm currently at Florida State University dancing there. And uh, I make the drive from Tallahassee to Gainesville every Saturday just because I love the opportunity to work with uh, Alberto and Sonia. It's just, it's a blessing, you know. The other day, Alberto was just talking to us and giving us uh, pointers here and there, and, and then all of a sudden he goes, stop. And I'm a little confused because it had been going pretty well. And then he says, you know, you remind me of myself when I was a young man. And I was just very surprised that he even said that to me. And um, it just was an honor to hear that coming from him, you know, such a great dancer and teacher in person and just just to hear that it just was fantastic. I remember a few years ago when we found out that Alberto had cancer. Yes. It was a very frightening situation. So we found a doctor at one hospital and went to him and started to get some of the very unfortunate news. Um, do you remember, Sonia, that doctor was very clinical? 
Yes. And he talked he talked in terms that were very frightening. He would he would make a lot of commentary about 50% of the people I, uh, don't survive from this and a man of his age and he kept using that that beginning phrase a man of his age which was all very um, distressing. Yes, I remember it was very difficult for me because I, I, I am here alone, only only you, mm -hmm. only you. Um, she's is very very uh, friend with us, uh, with Alberto, and with me, mm -hmm. and difficult time with for me mm -hmm. in that moment. Right, and and we communicate in this yes. way. I mean, you know. Yes. As dancers, we can communicate through our body because your body tells yes. the truth. So, yes. Sonia's face and her body, it, oh, yeah. she didn't even have to speak. I, I knew how she was feeling and her feelings were, were making me feel like I had to do something. So, I called the doctor at the other hospital that I had, knew and he told me that um, he knew of a doctor that had a much more positive attitude uh, in his approach to his patients and we brought Alberto to the new doctor. And just within, remember that one meeting, the doctor said, oh, yes. Alberto, Mr. Alonso, yes, you yeah, have yes. plenty of life to live. I remember. Yeah, and he said, you can go back to work in six weeks yes. and let's get this thing out of you. And you know, so I've gotten to this place with, with Sonia where I understand her sometimes even when she speaks some Spanish, but for the most part, when we're talking about medical issues, mm -hmm. I, I almost become sort of Italian. <laughs> you know, I use yes. my hands a lot and, and I got a piece of paper. Remember I was drawing pictures yes, of his yes. lungs. This is one lung, this yes. is all this, whatever we could do just to communicate. Then I, I real, uh, the frustration got to a level where I finally said to the doctor, is there any person in this hospital that can help us so that Sonia can have a better understanding yes. of what's happening with her husband? And they said, yes, we have interpreters. So I left the hospital and when I came back, remember Sonia? Yes. You said, Alora, guess what my interpreter's name is? Uh-huh, Carmen. Carmen. Mm-hmm. That's lovely. <laughs> Carmen is everywhere. Carmen has been in Hungary, Italy, in Finland, in England, in America, in South America, Mexico, <laughs> Spain. They love it in Spain. I can't hold her. <laughs> 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 <That's all right. laughs> yeah. Then you do the last pose. Maybe there is a philosophy behind it. Maybe there is something what I wanted to what I wanted to express in common freedom. They felt it, and especially women. Women, they saw themselves in, in that, you know. Pero hay algo en mi corazón que queda un poco que es una cosa interna y que nadie sabe que yo hubiera querido a Sonia bailar Carmen. Pero bueno, siempre lo ha bailado en mi corazón. Nunca lo pudo bailar en el escenario, pero sí en mi corazón.
poco tiempo después de llegar a la Florida, nuestro hijo Albertico comenzó una nueva familia y fuimos bendecidos con el nieto, que para variar también se llama Alberto. It's a love like this, like as big as when you have your son, but there's a little pity on it, you know, because you would like to have him always a happy, a happy day, you know, a happy coming. Nothing that would affect him, you know. I don't like to see him cry. It hurts my heart, you know. ¿Tú sabes que el, el, los nietos te estimulan a vivir? Siempre quiere uno vivir más para los nietos, para verlos crecer. Él es como nuestra última función, la última coreografía de Alberto. Mi mejor baile es mi nieto. Now I'm going to say, I'm going to tell you something. You've been doing this much better, you know, since the last time we rehearsed. Nevertheless, you have to be, be very careful because this time, you remember what I told you, this time is one chance only. If you make mistakes, that's it, kaput, like the Germans said. So you have to really put your soul into this. I cannot do anything else. I cannot do any more. Whatever I did, I hope you all have it here and translate it into the your bodies, and of all, of all problems, do not scare. Don't go to a, do a step, or oh, I'm frightened to do this step. Please take that out of your mind. You understand that? Now, you're ready? God bless you, I bless you. I kiss you all, so go and dance, okay? I'm going to sit outside. <laughs> all of you, okay? <laughs> Now go. I feel that I would like to work all the time. I don't want to retire. As long as my, my, my brains help me out, I want to keep on learning. And I'm saying the word learning that big or bigger because you die learning. It's not true that you just, ah, I did my thing like that, no. You learn most of the time because life goes like this. And every year goes faster. And things come in, you know, so you have to keep on keep, keeping your eyes, you know, otherwise you jump backwards instead of forward. Run, run! Once more, again. <laughs> Go! Was that all right? Oh! <laughs> <laughs>